Have you ever asked the question, how do I have a better worship service? You ever asked that as a church leader, church planter, church planner? You ever ask, how do you improve the worship service? How to improve the preaching time? Those are good questions really to ask, aren't they? But sometimes we need to ask questions like how to improve our facilities, how to make the children's ministry better. Those are important issues, but tonight and what I hope you hear from us as we teach a little bit tonight and tomorrow is we want you to focus on the real business of the church, the disciple-making business. Get back into the people business, the, the people business that that ask questions like this. Fact is, these may be some questions you want to write down and, and to think about and even consider. As we consider the mission of Jesus Christ, as you look at Jesus' life, Jesus said, and I know for you that were here last week, you, you heard Scott teach about, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. That's what Jesus said. And as, as you follow Jesus, He's going to make you a fisher of men. Men And when you consider how Jesus did that, he had men following him. We call them apostles or disciples. And as they followed him, could you imagine walking down one day as they came into Jericho? And, and the Bible tells us that as they walked along, that there was a man named Zacchaeus that ran along in front of him and climbed up a tree. You remember that story? Yeah. And when they got to that place where Zacchaeus was standing, Jesus, he looked up and he said, Zacchaeus, come down. Is that what he said? And, and he said, I must go at your house. And, and there was a kind of an episode there where, where you hear the people, some people were murmuring, saying, he's going to be the guest of a sinner. You know, they're, they're complaining. I'm thankful that the Bible tells us that the reason Zacchaeus couldn't see Jesus was because uh, he was short. Because <laughs> there's a lot of people in our world today that can't see Jesus because the church people don't reflect Jesus. You believe that? Yeah. It's a sad commentary, but it's true. So, so, so one of the questions you might want to ask as you consider church and the mission of Jesus, do you help your leaders demonstrate a love for the Lord? And for people. That's what Jesus said when people came to him and said, what's the greatest commandment? What did he say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. And on those two laws, he would hang all the rules of the prophets, all the things that you can sum up. So in your church plan and your leadership and your organization of church and disciple making, are you helping your leaders love God and love people. Let me ask you another question. Do you help disciple and help your disciples care for other people? Because if you love them, one person says about love, they said love is action in the best interest of others. It's a good definition. Love, the simple definition, is action in the best interest of others. And if you really love people, if you really care for people, it will show up because you will hear what they say, you will see needs, you will respond to their needs, and you'll do something about it. And, and Jesus, when he saw Zacchaeus in that tree and called Zacchaeus down, you know what? I don't know, but I can imagine it's obvious that that day Zacchaeus did not know who Jesus was. Maybe he had heard a testimony. He had heard all the uproar of this man named Jesus. He was coming through Jericho. Let's find out who he is. Let's understand who Jesus is. And that day when, when Jesus called Zacchaeus down, the Bible shows Zacchaeus' love. You know, it tells us very clearly that, that Zacchaeus, as soon as he came down from that tree, he said this. He said, I give half of everything to the poor. And then he said, if I've wronged anybody and took something unjustly, I want to make restitution. I want to make sure. Because apparently when you really meet Jesus, you care about the poor. You care about people in need. And you care about relationships. 
So if there was wrong relationships, Zacchaeus said, I want to make it right. So a question, are you helping people in your leadership circle, in your church, your church plan, are you helping them care for other people? Do you hold people accountable to care for other people? Because sometimes we just hope that they get cared for. Fact is, a lot of times, all we really hope is they show up. That's right. And we hope they give something in the offering plate. And, but are we really providing care for them? Are we working with them? Because what Jesus shows us over and over and over again, that He cared, He loved, He would give His life as a ransom for many, for them. But in Matthew in 22, 36, it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul and love your neighbor as yourself. And then when you think about helping somebody grow up, helping somebody really be like Jesus, those disciples that were following Jesus, I could imagine some of them, you know, we don't know all the story. We just know what was recorded in Scripture. I don't know how Jesus knew Zacchaeus by name, but I can tell you this, if you are helping your people love people, they know people by name that are far from God. And sometimes you may have to not call them out of a tree, but if you're praying for and you are helping people care for people, you would know them by name and you would be able to call them out. Come out of there. Let's come down. I need you to meet Jesus. I need you to see how loving Jesus and seeking first like we would sing about his seeking first his righteousness and his kingdom that it would change the way we live and work. But when Jesus came down to live and show us and those disciples that followed him on that Jericho street, he was teaching them. In fact, is some people behind him, those disciples following him, they were probably thinking, what's he doing now? You know, calling out this guy. Everybody else starts murmuring, saying he's gone to be at this house of a sinner. But see, Jesus, he tells his mission. He says, I've come to seek and to save that which is lost. For the church, and the good thing about church planting is we're going after people that are lost and far from God. People that are dead. And so, as you consider questions, are you helping people to individually care for people and to individually seek people. Because Jesus, in a lot of his stories, if you read through your Bible, you'll see that Jesus, he had to go through Samaria. It's interesting, at Samaria, he met somebody and a revival broke out in Samaria. But do you sometimes have to go to a place? Because if you have somebody by name, it could be like in my life, some of my hobbies, I leverage them for the gospel. And so I, I will purposely spend time with things and people, but in the midst of spending time with things and playing around hobby stuff, I'm really out there connecting with people like John that I know by name. Fact is, the first time I met John, I said, John, tell me your name. He said, well, convict. I said, no, I know what people call you, convict, because he spent time. But I don't want to call you convict. I want to call you by your name, because I have higher hopes for you than what you used to do and where you used to stay. And he said, my name's John. I said, well, John, I'm Daryl. And we have friendship, and we connect on a regular basis, and we play together, racing and things of that nature. But can I tell you, when we think about your people, if you are asked one of your leaders, who's the person you're seeking after? Who's the person you intentionally may go through Jericho for that you may have to call down? People might not understand it. People might get frustrated. But if you look at Jesus' mission, Jesus said, I've come to seek and to save that which is lost. And Jesus said in Matthew, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. One old preacher said this about following Jesus. He says, if you're following Jesus, 
and you're not fishing for men, you may need to check up your following Jesus. So in the church that you're planting, in the church that you're leading, all the work that you're doing after you worship and the music is good and people's hearts are stirred and hands are raised and maybe knees are bowed and hearts are humbled, when they leave the door, do they think that was a great worship service? Or who can I seek? Who do I need to go tell this good news to? See, Jesus' mission, Jesus' purpose was to do something that we couldn't do. He came to die and give His life so people could have eternal life. I remember as a father of a young child, now he's 21, but at that time he was... The fact is, we quit letting him watch some of the public TV shows because he was getting violent. He just he loved Power Rangers, and he always wanted to you know, fight and do that kind of stuff. And it was incredibly crazy how he just always... I mean, just a boy in him. And so we got him... Christian and, you know, Bible stories to start watching. And I'll never forget the day I walked home and I walked down the hallway. And when I look, he had unlaced my shoes and he had my shoestrings and he was swinging them because now he was David and I was Goliath. And, 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 and I could see it. And so even though we put him out, you know, man, the Bible's a violent book. And then he, you know, he had me in his target and he was swinging it. And I'm like, you know, I know I'm going to take the fall. And I'm just glad he didn't have a knife to cut my head off. But can I tell you, I was talking to him one day, and he's still a little kid. And I said, son, what do you want to do when you grow up? You know, because what you ask kids. And he said, I want to be a saver. And I said, you mean, what do you tell me? He said, I want to be a, a savior. And I'm like, wow, I must be preaching some bad theology because, you know, what's he thinking well, you know, I unpacked that with him, and he basically wanted to go save people. You know, that's what the Power Rangers would do, and that's what, you know, David did, and that's what heroes do is they go save people. Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. His mission that he declared for himself was, that's what I came to do. So when you start asking questions, you know, when you think about are people leaving the worship service, are they going out there doing what they're doing? Are they really going out there saying, I've got to tell people, I've got to share? Because it could be that they're not going out there sharing and helping people come to know who Jesus is because we in the church don't equip them to know how to do it. We just expect them to do it. We don't show them how to do it. We don't model it for them. We don't help them do it. But Jesus, when He came, He showed. And I'm sure all those disciples who followed Him saw Jesus. He didn't say, hey, you in the tree. He said, Zacchaeus, come down. And sometimes we have the privilege of randomly serving somewhere and randomly just kind of coming to the place of, of really being in a place and serving randomly and leading somebody to Jesus. But what does it look like to intentionally go after somebody? To intentionally say, you know what, I'm going to start praying on a regular basis. I'm going to make sure I build friendship and relationship and provide care. And as a pastor, as a leader here tonight, hopefully what you'll be seeing in the next season is how to identify where people are and then because you know where they are, you can help them take the next step. Because see, the church, I think, fails us sometimes because we just want to say, come to church. Hear the preacher preach. And Jesus, he did preach with big crowds. He had specific altar calls, if you will. He had specific things. But when he challenged the people to follow him, it was to go make disciples. To, to help them to understand how to do that. So, so for us, when we think about how we care for people, it's with intentional, intentionally living life together, in relationship, calling them out, helping them know we care for them and we know the best thing we can ever know in this world, which is Jesus Christ.
And because we follow Him, we know how to love Him. And because we love Him, we want to help others know how to love Him. And as they love Him and they share that with others, we begin community. And then it's not my job to disciple everybody. I'm the disciple, but in community, we disciple each other. So when my brother sees something in my life, he speaks into it and says, Hey, Daryl, you need to tighten up there. And as you tighten up there, because here's what the Scripture says, then I'm more like Jesus. Seeking first that kingdom, what Jesus said to do, go make disciples. So so I want to encourage you tonight as we think about Jesus' mission as leaders, the most important thing you can do as a leader is to know how to be a disciple and how to make disciples that make disciples that make disciples. Because that's what Jesus told us to do in community.